just coming back for another video thought on this uh, video I wanted to really highlight um, something you know that get, lets you know a little bit about myself in terms of how I got to this point of you know having gone through experience being in jail and now uh, you know my future of going to to prison um, a lot a lot of what I had gone through personally was a lot of trauma um, so a lot of addiction issues and you know you may you may hear from many other uh, YouTube channels that focus on people's um, you know past incarcerations in which they talk about you know that how addiction plays a big role in what influence their lives and of course how it influence them um, you know when they're released um, so I, I don't think I'm personally that much different from those folks um, however I will say you know, even though, you know, I, I feel like I am a very educated person and I know the textbook definition of trauma and addiction, I personally had never gone into service or care for these issues. Um, even though I know what mental health counseling is about, I had never gone to mental health uh, counseling, you know, for the therapist. Um, and I, I knew th about things like a 12 step program, uh, for recovery from addiction, you know, I, I, on the surface, but, uh, in real life, I had personally never been in a situation like that to be sitting in a room with other people talking about my issues. Um, so, you know, part, part of the th experience, you know, when you go through the process of being uh, court involved is that you find out you will be immersed in, in services. You're naturally going to uh, be pushed to go see a counselor, a therapist, psychologist. Um, you're going to be pushed to address any type of behavioral issues, um, mental health issues that you're having. And I was blown away as a person who had previously never decide to reach out to those services and the amount of help that I've gotten back has been excellent and although you know me being in in service doesn't really change the fact that I'll be going to prison I will say if you are not in this particular situation or as serious as mine which is you know a, a prison term um, you really should consider kind of what, how you can decide, um, the types of services that you could access, you know, how intensely you or frequently you want them. And also, you know, what, what do you hope to get out of it? And, I think one thing I learned from 12 steps programs, like for recovery, and th these are typically known as like AA, NA, uh, sexual, uh, sexual addicts anonymous. They, they come in many different topics. Um, but the biggest strength of those types of recovery services is that you, you are not doing it by yourself. So whereas maybe if it's one-on-one -on -one therapy, you're, you're talking privately, confidential, confidentially with a therapist, uh, some, some other types of services where you may be working in a group where there is confidentiality, but 
I think when you really realize that you're not alone with your with your addiction or with your problems or mental health issues, you you can make a more tangible effort in trying to address those issues versus when you're when you're all by yourself it's very easy to bottle that stuff up and just decide to deal with it another day i think um this is kind of where i've learned the most through this whole process you know uh, of trying to become a better person is actually participating in those activities and for once feeling like i don't have to um only talk to people because i'm using them or you know it's transactional uh which is part of part part of some of my personal issues is that i don't trust people uh so you know i so i've gone through an evolution just trying to retrain my brain on how i think about behaviors and actions and uh, from what I've been told is that they have similar services for folks in jail and prison, but uh, obviously it's it's on a much more limited basis because of just the setup. Uh, but out in the community, you know, if you wanted to go to an AA meeting, uh, in most places they'll have one daily or on the phone and of course in our current era you can do it uh, also through teleconference so i think there's a lot of options for people to access services in the way that they're comfortable uh so it's less of an excuse now to say i i don't want to even try um but i i really want to kind of push this message to people that if you are suffering some from some type of clinical problem a problem with the brain you know and the mind that you shouldn't really feel like i can't pay for it or i don't have the time for it you know i don't want to deal with it right now and you push it off really try to maximize on every second that you have to try and address these things and i i've learned through my own kind of uh lessons that you can even do build it into something as simple as you know um one of my other hobbies is to to take care of fish i build my meditation clearing of my mind every morning when i feed my fish no no talking no checking my phone literally just be in in the moment of feeding my fish watching them eat it making sure that they eat it and you know know that this is my time uh and then when i stop doing that activity i can proceed what's to the next thing because i think when you wake up in the morning, you have the unlimited number of things that you could could start doing when you first wake up, but then you you're you're struggling to figure out what is the best thing to do. And I think, you know, that that mindset I will honestly say to you, when I was in jail, I did not want to face reality when I was in jail because I was like, I'll just sleep the rest of the day away because what's the point? What's the point of doing anything when I know the next day will be the same? I mean, the only thing I did wake up for is for the count, right? When you do a count, you either line up against the wall. That is my physical activity today. I go back to bed. Now, even in jail, you will have people who notice stuff like that. And they'll say, you know what? That's not good for you. And I literally had people drag me off my bunk and said, you can't sleep anymore. You need to play cards with us. You need to do this with us. You need to come talk with us. They, they knew what were this warning signs, you know, if, if a person's not doing well. And, you know, I... I struggled with it. I was stubborn. I didn't want to get out of bed, but they pushed me. And, and 
you know, after probably a week and a half, I got, I did get into the routine of, all right, I'm not going to sleep away the entire day and I'll just keep talking to people. And, and about two weeks in, then I start seeing people leave. Either people are, their cases are dismissed or they're sentenced because their case was resolved. And you start seeing these people go and, and you start to realize that time does move when, when you're in jail versus this feeling like nothing changes. Um, and, and that's the hard part with de- talking about things like, you know, mental health issues and addiction is that we're often convinced that, that nothing changes that we don't change as people and the people around us aren't willing to change. And that's simply not true. So I, I thought this video can, can give some optimism or some explanation for people who don't understand why behavioral change goes so slowly for many people that we're not willing to do things that we know are good for us or that to overcome kind of our inner demons that we're not willing to do the maximum amount of work right away to address it because it's hard it is really hard to to move at that speed when you're when you feel like your mind's playing catch up so hopefully uh if you found this uh content you know, interesting, leave me a comment, any of your personal thoughts about uh, how to deal with complex issues like uh, mental health uh, and uh, addiction and what you think, uh, you know, maybe I should talk more about, you know, that would help folks. So uh, definitely if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click subscribe, uh, like this video, and of course leave your questions or comments below so I can read them and you know that will definitely help me on uh, content. So I will talk to you guys soon. Alright, bye.